Okay, so we learned all this random stuff about kinematics, and we learned all this random stuff about physics, but how the heck is it actually going to be useful? Well, we're going to try an example. So, if you can't tell because I don't draw very well, these two finger-looking things are supposed to be guns, and they're supposed to be shooting out two bullets at the same time. They're supposed to be at the same height. I drew them in two separate little drawings. So they're a certain height above the ground. Let's call this one meter. And let's call this one meter as well. And they are being shot horizontally at different speeds. So let's call this four meters per second. And let's call this two meters per second. Now, what I want to know is which one hits the ground first. So we're gonna see how long it takes each one to hit the ground and figure this out. So the first thing to do, and I'm gonna use the first drawing, is to figure out how many forces or what forces are acting on this bullet. Well, there is no horizontal force acting on it. And the reason I know that is because I've assumed that these are going at a constant velocity. So there is no horizontal force because it's going horizontally at four meters per second. In a second, it'll also be at four meters per second. In two seconds, it'll be at four meters per second and so on because there is no acceleration and therefore no net force in the horizontal direction. Meanwhile, in the vertical direction, there's obviously a net force. This is going to be the force of gravity, which we like to say is equal to mg and m is the mass. And so we're gonna call this one kilogram just to make this simple. And this one is also then one kilogram because the only difference is the velocity. So then this is going to be equal to the mass of one times gravity acceleration, which we are going to approximate at 10. So this is kilograms and this is meters per second squared. And this is going to get us a force of gravity equal to 10 newtons. Now I really didn't have to do all that because what I want to work with is the acceleration. So actually, even though this is going four meters per second horizontally, it's not going any speed vertically. So this is zero meters per second. And remember, because there's no force acting horizontally and we're concerned about when it hits the ground, which is vertical, we're gonna look at the vertical component. So if we go back to our kinematics equations and we look for the one that takes the variables we have and solves for time, what we actually can get is we can say delta x equals v0 t plus 1 half a t squared, right? And we know that delta x is 1 meter. We know that v0 is 0 meters per second and that time is unknown. And then we have 1 half times 10 meters per second squared times time, which is again unknown. Okay, so we have this set up and we can cross out this because zero times anything is zero. So we have one equals one half times 10 times t. So one equals five t. And if we we're gonna look at the units, the units would also cancel. So t is a second or in seconds. So t is going to equal one fifth of a second. So if we're gonna do this for the other bullet, which is going again two meters per second horizontally, but zero meters per second vertically, it's being acted on the same force of gravity equals mg. And it's the same exact conditions in the vertical component direction. Um, so this has the same acceleration, and we can solve the equation the same, because all these variables are the same. There's not a force variable in the kinematic equations. So actually, these are going to hit the ground at the same time, despite their horizontal speeds being different. So this is one example of how to kind of apply forces and kinematics, because we use the force of gravity to find the acceleration, and the acceleration to find the time. So... There is another application to this, and it's a little more complicated. It's called a projectile. So a projectile is when we throw something up in the air, and then it comes back down. The nice thing about projectiles is pretty much the only force acting on it is gravity. So usually what's going to happen is that we're going to have um, some type of object. Maybe it's a ball. 
and it's going to be going up in the air and it's going to be going up in the air at some angle so let's say that this is like 15 degrees and it's going to have a constant velocity to start out with or not it's just going to have some velocity to start out with and it's not going to be constant because the only force acting on it is gravity and that's going to mean that it has to be accelerating because it's got net force. So let's say that this is two meters per second. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna go up and then it's gonna go down and it's gonna land on the ground. So it's going to land on the ground in the exact negative that it started with. So it's going to go up and it's gonna to get to the top and at the top, it's got this instant where it's got horizontal velocity but the vertical velocity is going to actually be nothing. For one instant, it's just going to hang in the air and the vertical velocity is going to be nothing. And the reason why is because this whole time we are accelerating downward with gravity, right? So it's going to be going at some velocity and it's going the velocity is going to get less and less and less by the increments of the gravitational acceleration until it gets to zero, and then it's gonna keep getting less and less because we have direction and it's gonna go negative. So what I want to know is how long is this ball in the air? So we're gonna do kind of the same thing again. So we can kind of use the same principles that we used with our bullets. So remember how we had like a horizontal velocity and it wasn't really doing anything because there was no net horizontal force. Well, here we've got a velocity at an angle, but we can split it into components so with Sokotoa, we can say that this is 2 sine 15, and this is 2 cosine 15, and these are in meters per second, their velocities. So this horizontal velocity of 2 cosine 15, when it lands on the ground, it's going to have a horizontal velocity of 2 cosine 15. But the vertical velocity is what's going to change, and here it's going to be negative 2 sine 15 meters per second. So I want to figure out how long does this take? So we have our initial velocity. We actually have our final velocity as well, just because of logic of projectiles. If we let it fall all the way down to the ground, it's going to hit the ground with the same velocity that it started with. This has to do with something called conservation of energy, which we can talk about later. But we have our V0. We have our V, which is just negative to sine 15. If we're looking at like the Y axis and this is positive Y and this is negative Y. And we have our acceleration because this thing is being acted on with the force of gravity, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the acceleration is going to be the acceleration due to gravity equals negative 10 meters per second squared. And so the reason I'm saying negative 10 is negative, it's going downward. So at the end, when we have our horizontal component that's the same and our vertical component that's downward, we said that was a negative velocity because it's going down. So this is negative acceleration because it's also going down. And we can use these three variables to get time because we have this equation of, we can use V, equals v0 plus a t. Right, so if we solve this equation a bit, the difference in the velocities equals acceleration times time. So the difference between the velocities is going to end up being 2 sine 15 minus negative 2 sine 15 is 2 sine 15 plus 2 sine 15, which is going to be 4 sine 15 degrees, I should have put a degree symbol from the beginning, equals a times t. So if we divide both sides by a, we get that, and actually a was 10, so we can put in 10. And then we could like put in our calculator what this is and solve for it. And then we will get how long this thing was in the air. Now I'm gonna leave you with a nice lovely thought that 
the reason why I hate teaching this stuff is because you're not going to use these once you know the easier way. I'm just going to work my way through all the different things you have to know and I promise you there will be a time when you say, hey, why did we learn these? Because we don't need them.